Hey guys, Dave here. What are we, uh, I think it's like the 20th of August and, uh, like 2018. I'm way up in Northern Ontario. I just got a canoe <clears throat> and I, I just, I, I had to get going on it. So I started driving at six o'clock in the morning. It's now 11 minutes after three and I just put into the water. I'm up in Northern Ontario and uh, I'm, I'm way up here for four or five glorious days of just being in the woods. I brought my nephew with me and uh, we're going to fish and forage and just have a good time. So I'll, uh, I'll take some video while we're on our way. We've got a about a five mile or seven and a half kilometer canoe trip, uh, possibly two portages uh, to get to this spot that I was looking at on Google Maps. I, it, it looked like it'd be a good spot, so I guess we'll see. And uh, yeah, I'll get back to you if there's anything interesting. Obviously had some trees down. nephew. Not a single tattoo on his back. I'm so ashamed. You won't do them. <laughs> so we just paddled across the, the, the first lake, the, the only lake really. Um, now we're into the channel going over to the lake where we're going to do the camping and I can hear the waterfall coming up so we are we're, we're so close and it is 440 so let me see we started at about 10 after 3 I think it was and we we kind of meandered around the lake a little bit so we're actually doing more than seven and a half kilometers we're probably doing closer to 12 or 14 um, but uh, no we just you know we just wanted to roam around a little bit and see what the first lake had to offer but uh, I'm I'm really interested in the in the second lake. Um, I I I kind of know this area. I have property nearby, um, and I know that there's big big bass over here. And there's generally nobody around. There's no cottage on on this lake. There's there's nothing. There's just nobody. So we're heading there now. And um, yeah, I'm gonna put the camera down now before I get into the current of the uh, waterfall that's coming up. Uh, and that's our first portage. And uh, we we definitely have a little more footage, but I forgot all of my gear to connect my camera directly to my canoe. So I'm doing everything by hand for this trip. So there's not really going to be an awful lot of footage of coming in and going out, unfortunately. Not like I hoped. So uh, we will see you on the next lake. So, we thought it would be fun to try some rapids. We come down and hit that tree. We flipped right over. The canoe is right behind my nephew, sticking out by that log. It's wedged in there. We can't move it. I, I'm actually surprised this camera's even working. 
it might be the the only camera gear that I have left working. Thousands of dollars just gone. All my my whole camp pack, my nephew's sleeping bag, all our food, his clothes, our everything, all our bedding, everything. It's just drenched. It's just waterlogged. It's soaked. We can't get the canoe out. We're stuck in the middle of a river. We can't even really get to shore. We've been trying to extract this canoe for half an hour. And uh, the worst part of the whole thing is, even though my family knows where I am, knows where we are, they're not expecting us home until Friday. And if I don't show up Friday, chances are they're going to think, well, it's Dave. He's just going to, you know, stay another day or two. Nothing to worry about. So it could be days beyond that before anybody starts worrying. So at this point, and I'm, this is not for a video. This is not me messing around. This is, we have found ourselves in a survival situation. It's going down to like 14, 15 degrees celsius tonight and we're waterlogged we're drenched all our clothes bedding everything why don't we set up on that little island right there i know it's a walk up rapid but we've had the boat for this long we can't get the boat to move it ain't going nowhere and we can't set up a camp on that little island that's waterlogged it's all rock yeah, and there's no space the other one. Up. oh that way if someone comes to the other way and down well nobody nobody cottages on this lake nobody comes here well, yeah, tomorrow. Okay, well, um, I'm going to give the extraction of the canoe uh, at least another couple of attempts before I resign myself to uh, staying in this area because what I'm seeing is a lot of a lot of cow parsnip, which if our skin becomes exposed to that, it'll cause burns and rash, and it's worse than poison ivy. Um, I don't really expect there to be much to eat in this river fish-wise. It's just the current's really strong. It's knee-deep here. Um, this is not an ideal place to set up camp, so we at least have to give it the old college try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of these logs over here, and I'm going to try to use leverage to get the canoe out. But I have to dig through my waterlog pack and find my... Actually, I don't need my saw. I'll just pull up my axe. My axe is right on the outside. So that's uh, that's the going plan right now. I'm going to get my axe and I'm going to get some leverage pulls. So hopefully the next time you see me, I'll have some good news. I found my fishing pole. Lieutenant Diane fishing. Oh. This current is so strong. Cannot barely walk in this current. Oh. Oh. We got the canoe extracted. We found Oh, we found a lot of stuff so far. I think we still have our stakes, which is good because I paid like 45 bucks for two of them. Canadian. For you Americans out there. Uh, oh, I'm just so exhausted right now. It's... Oh. This current... Oh, we might have to maybe give up on anything we haven't found yet, call it a loss, find a suitable campsite, uh, get a fire going and start drying our stuff before it gets dark and cold. <clears throat> now I have a change of clothes in my pack. If you will remember, anybody who watched my pack video, I have a change of clothes in a dry bag. So, 
uh, great news for me, unfortunately, I don't think my nephew, Kane has done that yet, so lesson learned. Um, see you when we have a campsite. So, it seems that my camera equipment did not really get the worst of it. And... I'm recording on, like, my usual one, the Canon, now. Um, we got to get a fire started. We got to dry out everything. Um, sleeping bags, sleep mat with some clothes, my hammock, a whole bunch of knickknacks and whatnots, most of the stuff we salvaged, and then clothes, sleeping bags, whatnot as well. I uh, I lost my stakes. That's a real letdown. So we we stopped at this place. I, I I like to stop by there whenever I possibly can. And their stakes are just awesome. They're just phenomenal. So two great big stakes, like 47 bucks for two of them. And washed away in the river. Uh it's like one of the few things that we lost actually. Um my nephew lost, like, some beer, but that's not really, like, all that big a deal, I guess. Um, and now he's behind the camera asking me if I have a light. You know, like, like I didn't get dumped into the water, too. I'm standing here in my underarms. Where's your matches? Oh, yeah, my matches, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's totally going to be... Huh? That's totally going to be good matches, yeah. Light, light anywhere matches. Safety one. No? Okay. Where's my Which one? Where's my get lost bag? Oh, right here. Oh, oh it's so good. Cool. There's not too much there. No, there. I managed to pull this out of the water pretty quick, but no. Oh, the old fashioned way. Well, can't wait until we have a fire going for him to smoke a cigarette. So, holy jumpings, I'm just getting eaten up by mosquitoes here. Like, this is not an ideal place. This is not where I planned on, uh, on camping for the night. But, uh, honestly, I think our boat's taken on water. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't really see how we're going to manage this just yet. But, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to help Nimrod here light a cigarette before he uses up my whole ferro rod <laughs> trying to light a smoke. So back to you soon. So here's a matter of going from bad to worse. I, uh, I'm, I'm tired fighting that, that river current, trying to get that canoe. So the canoe is wedged under the log, really strong current. It took everything that we had to get that canoe out from under the log fighting that waterfall kind of current and then sort of up onto the log to dump it out and sort of whatever and then just roaming around through the river trying to collect our stuff everything's soaking wet we're trying to hang things up we're trying to you know get by now thankfully our cell phone still works so we can call for help um 
but it's you know we got a fire going we're trying to dry stuff i'm just so tired from from fighting the current and i whacked myself in the thumb with my axe well i was well obviously shouldn't have been playing around with it so it went th like through the thumbnail uh and sort of onto the side a bit but mostly just the thumbnail so like you can't even stitch that so it doesn't need stitches it just i need to to keep it clean and wrapped and whatever the problem is my first aid kit is soaked everything in it is just soaked and half of it's ruined so it's it's just a a matter of you know just bad to worse I'm, I'm trying to dry everything out so i can just get a good night's sleep maybe have a bite to eat um and uh try to figure out what we're going to do in the morning um and uh yeah it's 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 just uh one of those things where you know i, I guess i i wasn't paying attention and uh being you know kind of stupid which is not a good idea when you're in a situation like this where we're kind of in a survival situation right now. And uh, uh, we still haven't checked to see if the canoe is actually taking on water. We're just too tired. Um, so we don't know if we're stranded here or not. So all in all, I, I can't believe that the cameras still work. My first aid kit is soaked. It's ruined for the most part. But all my cameras are fine. My phone is fine. I mean, you know, we had them wrapped up and, you know, in protective bags and whatever. Whereas, you know, the first aid kit was just a little first aid kit. You know, kind of lesson learned. I should have put that in a dry bag. Um, but all in all, we're... Uh, We're actually in a zone where we're not even supposed to have fires, um, or day fires at least. Um, but, and I mean, the situation we're in, I just spent two hours up to here in water, uh, messing around, you know, with a canoe and, you know, getting stuff out and whatever. So, I mean, we're not really going to get in any trouble for having a small fire trying to dry our stuff out, but it's going to be dark in i don't know an hour hour and a half and i i just don't see us having all our stuff dried out in time so um we'll see um until then i'm gonna have to be a little more careful so don't play with an axe unless you are alert and willing to pay attention to what you're doing. Let that, let that be a lesson to everybody. Oh, this, this trip was supposed to be, you know, th like three, four days of just glorious fishing and, and, you know, camping and having a good time. Most of our food is gone. Um, some of our stuff is wrecked and we might not have a boat to get home in yeah we i don't know i don't know anyway i'm gonna stop babbling and uh get back to work well everything is pretty soaked but i'm at least able to bandage this up so that's a plus Oof. that's gonna hurt tomorrow ain't it
Oh, all right. So, I'll live. Back to your regularly scheduled, unscheduled blundering. Okay, we got some progress. We got a tent set up. It's mostly dry. My micro light sleeping bag is pretty much dry. And my inflatable sleep pad is dry. The hammock's not so dry. Cane's not so dry. I should pretty much be okay. So I'm going to give Kane my micro light sleeping bag and the tent. I'm going to take the hammock. It's probably going to rain, so I just got to get my tarp up, which is strung up over, you know, behind me over here. It doesn't really matter if it's dry or not. It's just a tarp. I just have to basically get a line up and then put my tarp over. So, I don't know. I mean, let me, and oh man, my thumb is just throbbing. I thought about getting some bulrush uh, for its analgesic properties, but I didn't want to open up the, um, the, the, the dressing uh, that I've got. I'm just going to leave that as it is until I get out of here. Um, so, okay. Uh, for my get lost bag, I've got a space blanket. Uh, set up as well um, that's basically we're gonna lay that down on the tent floor just to make sure that the sleeping bag that Kane's sleeping in doesn't get wet plus it's heat reflective so that'll help him um, I've got thankfully I keep my rain gear in a dry bag and an extra pair of clothes in a dry bag so Kane is gonna get the rain gear the sleeping bag and the tent I'm gonna get the dry clothes, the wet hammock, and the dry sleep pad. Um, so, okay. Because I smashed my thumb up pretty wickedly, that's our fire. And you can't really tell because it's, it's actually getting really dark. Um, we've got, like, we haven't cut it up. It's long, long, uh, logs that we just feed into the fire, uh, as it starts to burn down. Um, I'm not really much for swinging an axe right now, and even though I'm ambidextrous and it is my left hand that I hit with the axe, I'm just, I'm, I'm too tired and I'm just not in the, the kind of prime shape uh, to be doing stuff like that. So, all of our stuff is, yeah, it's just too, too dark. Um, so here we have a, a cooler, all our ice melted, but we have a cooler with what little food we have left and then spread uh, at the back of the fires. My um, Molly 2 rucksack and just everything in it spread out trying to dry by the fire and then sleeping bags and my hammock and some other stuff hung up my boots and you know kind of whatever and then over here is the tent which we will probably move a little bit closer to the fire when it comes time to sleep um, but for the now we did manage to salvage like a pound of bacon and some eggs that were supposed to be for breakfast tomorrow but they are uh, kind of a temperature sensitive kind of thing and uh, 
we have no ice in the cooler anymore. That, that got washed away, that's gone. So I think breakfast is for dinner and that's what we're gonna do. Now, unfortunately, it's just way too dark to, uh, to film them anymore, but bacon and eggs is, is what we're having for breakfast. And then tomorrow, or bacon and eggs is what we're having for dinner. And then tomorrow, my MREs are what we're having for breakfast. And you know what? I might make the best of it. I might go out and try to get some fish for lunch. I, okay, so we, our family knows what had happened. Uh, my brother very kindly told us, um, if you need me, give me a call. I'll come get you. If not, bugger off and leave me alone. Um, and that's a little bit nicer than he actually put it. Um, he's such a loving man. Um, so we're, we're basically okay. Um, you know, we're not really in a survival situation anymore. So tomorrow, after the rain is done, I think we're probably going to go out and we're going to try to get some fish and we're at least going to have a fish dinner. And if we do, then you're definitely going to join us for that. Um, but for the now, uh, we didn't get to the site that we wanted to camp at. We're camped sort of up a hill from a river in a, uh, a spruce forested area. It's, it's actually nice and bright out on the river and it is dark here. So filming pretty much stops now. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow and hopefully it won't rain all day long. It is supposed to rain a little bit, but hopefully it won't rain all day long and we'll get out there and get some fish. Um, there are, there are largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, bass, and there are, um, lake trout and brook trout. And I'm really looking forward to trout. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow guys. Hey guys, so it's like 3.30 in the morning, about an hour ago, out of nowhere the campfire just sprung back to life, and I woke up, you know, like wondering, like what the heck is going on, you know, it was just really, really bright, which goes to show you, you know, what the the fire band, fire band, the way it is, it's, uh, it's so dry, it's so, it's so bad out here, you really, really, really gotta watch, you know, I, uh, I slept really well, um, like everything's wet, I gave like most of the dry stuff to my nephew and everything that I'm sleeping in is wet but with my rain suit on it's it's really not all that bad and that extra pair of clothes um, really really helped out because um, the cane I mean he doesn't really fit it but he's he's wearing my uh, spare set of clothes and he's sleeping in what's dry the uh, micro light sleeping bag dried out by the campfire um, but everything else his sleeping bags are like, relatively large you know like typical sleeping bags not like a micro light so they're as a matter of yeah they're still really really wet My nephew woke up when the fire sprang to life as well, wondering what was going on. And uh, he's not sleeping quite so well, apparently. Uh, but I can hear him snoring in the tent, so he's he's getting some sleep. But uh, I don't know, just uh, sitting around thinking about 
the events that uh, led us to this point and uh, we're, we're still a fair ways from the campsite that I originally wanted to go and check out. There's an area that I, I, I spotted on Google Maps that I wanted to check out and uh, we're still a fair ways from that and this area that we're camped out in is really not ideal at all. It's, it's really not. Um, but, let's see if I can get a... a shot of this here. So that's all of our junk. Just sort of spread out, trying to uh, dry it out. It's underneath my tarp, just in case it does kind of start to rain. Um, but no, we were just so tired. We just, we, we sort of set up the, the hammock, the tent. We threw everything under the tarp, and uh, just, I don't know, sort of left it there. So I guess tomorrow we'll see if it's going to rain or not. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll spread things out a little bit better, and then we'll go out and see if we can't get some fish, because the vast majority of our food somehow managed to wash down river and we didn't we didn't get it back like my my nephew wanted to pick up a bottle of rye for our camp trip and uh me personally i'm not drinking um i'm i'm on a diet i'm trying to lose weight so i'm not drinking anything at all uh alcoholic wise um and of course, in the in the bottom of this river, he finds his bottle of rye that he brought along, but all of our food just washed away. So, not all of it, but you know, a good portion of it. And uh, at at first, I thought maybe my fire kit washed away, um, but uh, I had. Okay, that blue um, what is that? Some sort of a weird bug. Um, so that blue dry bag there. Um, I bought a couple of those from the dollar store. I think I did a review. I don't know if I uploaded it yet or not, but I did a review on it. And then I put my fire kit, my hygiene kit, and a few other things into one of them and uh, put it into my backpack. So, thankfully, my, my fire kit, my hygiene kit, all that kind of stuff is, is dry. would have been way ahead of the game if I had the presence of mind to buy more of those dry bags from the dollar store and put my camera equipment uh, into dry bags as well, which I'm going to do now. But I'll tell you, when I was jammed under that log in the river, and the immediate threat of drowning uh, had been overcome. The first thing I did was grab my camera bag and get it up out of the water. And I was, oh no, all of my camera gear is ruined. 
I don't know how not one camera was was ruined. Not one. Uh, the worst thing that happened to me, other than, you know, I'm soaking wet in the woods and uh, all my gear is drenched, I lost two great big steaks. Two great big ribeye steaks. So, it, it could have been a lot worse. <clears throat> so, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but my only... My only real issue, my only real complaint, I guess, is uh, my my thumb is just throbbing, and uh, I have some Tylenol one in my uh, med, in my med kit, so I think I'm going to take some of those and try to get back to sleep. But I slept a solid like five hours, and I feel just so much better. Um, but waking up to that campfire and then realizing how uh, how sore my thumb is from you know messing it up with the axe, I uh, I, I just I, I do feel better though. I do feel much more rested. So. Yeah, I just thought I'd update you guys while I can. Normally, I'd, you know, like maybe set some cameras up and uh, maybe put a chest rig on and, and set up camp and you know kind of do whatever. And instead, we just, you know, like a like a couple of like drowned raccoons, we we crawled uh, up onto the embankment here and we you know lugged all our stuff and uh, I was. Not 100% sure about my camera equipment at the time, and I just, oh boy, so um, I didn't get anything set up at all. But tomorrow, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get some fishing done. You know, we're gonna kind of whatever, and I'm gonna go and see if I can't find that uh, that campsite uh, that I wanted to check out, and I don't know, maybe we might. Uh, it's going to be hard to move everything while it's still drenched. But maybe, you know, I might just move camp uh, bit by bit. And uh, then, you know, I'll be able to do a video uh, where I'm actually setting up camp, setting a fire, all that kind of jazz. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you guys didn't get to see that. But it, it was one sad, pathetic sight uh, watching Kane and I crawl out of the river just drenched wet and um, I'm using you know my my buck Selkirk uh, to get a fire going and, and try to get everything dried out and you know kind of us warmed up I mean it wasn't too bad and it's not that cold out now but uh, yeah it, tomorrow there would be better content so sign off for now earlier I was talking to you guys and I was saying how my thumb was just throbbing and uh, I thought about it a little bit and I thought well you know maybe I wrap that a little too tight maybe that's part of the problem and uh, I got to the contents uh, that I have left and I have just enough first aid to uh, to be able to redo this properly this time and uh, yeah so I figured uh, you know what the heck do a video so first of all there's what I did so it's cut here all the way up then the, the fingernail so 
I think we can agree it doesn't need stitches. It's uh, pretty superficial. But that's why we have our first aid kits. So I got a, some, uh, some gauze and I have some antibacterial uh, ointment uh, which I have opened. I'm going to take the ointment and I'm going to squeeze it out onto the gauze. And then I'll just put that right over my uh, bad spot. Okay. Wrapping it the way that I did was not, not a smart move because I, I did it way too tight. So I want to unravel oh, the tape and then wrap it so that it's, it's not too, too tight. I'm not cutting off any circulation or, you know, anything too, too bad. He's tender. There we go. That ought to do it. There we go. That is throbbing a lot less now. That, that feels so much better. So you'll notice that I didn't touch the wound uh, you know, with my bare hands at all. Now, I do have some medical gloves and I do believe they're dry, but I, I didn't really need them this time. I just put the gauze down, put the antibiotic onto it, put that on, put the tape around, didn't touch it with my hands at all. That should help keep it clean, and hopefully I won't pick up an inf infection while I'm here in the woods. But, because uh, in Canada you need a prescription for antibiotics, really of any kind, um, unless you go to a pet store and pick up tetracycline for fish. Um, that'll actually work for people too, but it's such a low dose that it might help prevent an infection, but it certainly won't help you if you get an infection. Uh, so I'm going to leave this out to dry the way it is. And, uh, well, hopefully I can salvage a little bit of it. Um, if not, not a big deal. I have plenty of extra at home, and uh, i got to get a dry bag for this, definitely. Because... Uh, that's, that's just the way it is sometimes. See you tomorrow. Broke, uh, broke my reel. And, uh, well, after being underwater, it don't, don't really work all that well anyway.
Something was just coming to hit it as I pulled it out of the water. Something that looked very bass-like. He hit that good. Yeah, I know, buddy. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we are. Now this is rather small, but with all of our food washing down the river yesterday the way it did, I'm not... So, my reel is pooched. The pull was never that good to begin with. Uh, it's just a, a cheapo from Canadian Tire because I broke my good one last year. Oh. I'm still catching fish though. bass he's kind of small and he's got a few little worms on him little parasites so I'm gonna put him back I got a couple of good sized bass so Mostly I'm just doing this for fun now. Okay, so, recap. It's uh, first morning, but technically day two. I have lost... Oh, he let go. And he came back. Uh -oh. This reel is, it's really bad. Apparently dunking them in the river is uh, not good for them.
recap as to what I was saying before I was interrupted by fish and this thing here uh, crapping out on me. Um, so, you know, like a, a quick recap, I, uh, I capsized my canoe, knocked a hole in it. Uh, everything I have is drenched, soaking wet. Uh, some of it's dried out now. It's like, this is morning one, but it's kind of day two. Um, I lost, like, my stakes. I paid like 47 bucks for, for stakes. I lost them in the water, uh, along with an entire case of ginger ale. And, uh, I don't know, a few other things. Uh, broke a bunch of eggs, uh, destroyed my reel, you know, like, that's two in two years. Um, and what do I have to say about all that? A bad day at the lake is still better than a good day at work. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of enjoying myself. I'm still kind of having fun. I mean, there's some seriousness to the situation. But um, all in all, I mean, I could, you know, just rig this up sort of, you know, kind of like that and just fish off the the side of the canoe it's not taking on water that bad and i've already got a bunch of pine pitch ready to melt down and try to patch the uh, the canoe with um this when it's bright enough to do it which i suppose could be any time now uh, but i've been fishing since just before sunup so it wasn't it wasn't bright enough to do it in where we're camping so me show you so this little river that I've been fishing in the last little bit that's where we came down in a canoe half full of water and sort of all messed up you can see the tip of my canoe just poking out of ooh, there's our campsite only you can't see it because it's completely surrounded in white pine and spruce so literally it's it's so dark in there um, you can see out here fine just before the Sun comes up but it's still too dark in there okay so we did manage to salvage some eggs and a pound of bacon and uh, oddly enough I threw some some coffee that I bought like some some perk coffee into my camera bag and then we set off I didn't put it in you know the food bag in my backpack because it was just too much of a pain at that time so I just threw it in my camera bag and uh, the coffee in the creamer is dry it's, you know, just as good as my camera equipment. Um, so I've got some water on the fire. I've got some fish on the stringer and we got bacon and eggs. So it's, it's definitely time for coffee and breakfast. So I'm going to go back into there. Fresh perk coffee. Eggs, some poached, some hard boiled, depending on whether or not they broke when we went over the waterfall. If you're uh, ever around the Northern Ontario part, you're anywhere near West Guilford, or in it. The store in West Guilford. The only store. Yep. <laughs> Bacon, 
10 bucks a pound. Totally worth it. Oh, man. Mm. Mennonite bacon. 10 generations or something like that. Grain-fed pigs for 10 generations. It's not salty. It's not... It's not um, pungent. It's just like pure porcine goodness. This stuff is just so good. I don't think I can go back to eating regular bacon. All right. Bacon, everything is better than when you have it with bacon. Well, there's bacon and then there's bacon. And holy crap, I don't think I can go back to just regular bacon after this. It's literally that good. As good as bacon is, this is that much better. Amazing. Wow. What a breakfast. So, blew up my fishing pole, blew up my canoe, soaked down most of my stuff, lost, you know, a few things here and there, all of my battery packs. Uh, for my um, recharging of, you know, like phones, flashlights, things like that. Um, they're all pooched. They're all gone. The, the cameras and the battery packs for the cameras are fine. But the, the, the portable charging packs, they're, they're all crap. And all in all... I'm here, way up in northern Ontario, eating this bacon for breakfast and, and eggs. You know what? Worth it. Literally that good. Mmm. So good. All right, coffee then. It's a good thing I thought my nephew puts a lot of cream in his coffee. I think I'll grab some extra creamer. <laughs> and I threw it in the camera bag. Because the creamer in my camp pack got wet. It's it's pretty much it's garbage now. But um all is not lost. in the life. I'm sounding like a bomb was going to go off. Speed pressurizes the potato. <clears throat> Alright, come on, campfire. I quit smoking. Knock it off. <laughs> it worked. Do we have any eggs left? Or mm -hmm. Did you just cook all the broken ones? Not just broken ones. I threw a few of the, the good ones in there too. But um, I figured you'd want to fry some up in the bacon grease. So I didn't. 
I could care less how we eat. Well, I didn't do all of them, but uh, woo, that's hot. Did you put sugar in the water? No, but the eggs got soaked in sugar. <laughs> the sugar cubes got wet. Well, they're they're sweet. <laughs> Candied hard-boiled eggs. It's what's for breakfast. I gotta show you guys this before I turn the camera off. I should have recorded this because uh, here I'm running barefoot, barefoot through the woods with a handful of fire. I collected a bunch of pine pitch and uh, I patched up the crack in the canoe. So, that ought to do it. There's where I slept last night. My uh, hammock, my space blanket and uh, a dry pair of socks. And half the night I had a wet sleep pad, but it dried out and I gave it to my nephew. So he had the tent, the sleeping bag, and the sleep pad for the other half of the night. Which was conveniently the only half of the night I slept. <laughs> well, I heard you snoring before that, but I really heard you sawing logs after that oh man so we got a rainstorm rolling in we're still kind of wet and we're not going to get any drier in the rain so, I guess it's time we start making our way out. The canoe's still taking on some water. There's an area that I didn't patch that needs patching, uh, basically. But it's not too, too bad. And like I said, when I first started, uh, like a few lakes over, I own property near here. Um, so, we're going to go and basically hang out at the cabin for another day or so before we make our final trek out of here. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess that's kind of the end of this adventure. So, it's, I, it is what it is. Uh, we'll get out here and we'll do a proper camp trip, proper videos. Uh, you know, we'll do it up good, uh, but for now, my uh, semi-survival situation, uh, I guess you could say, is uh, pretty much coming to a close. Um, you know, we ate some food, we caught some fish. Uh, we could stay out here, but we're wet and it's raining, so we're just going to go dry off and be happy at the cabin. So... We'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, have a good one, guys.